So let's, people, let's move on to the discussion of, all right, Jordan Peterson and Mustafa Akyal. Muhammad Iman, mashallah, Mufti, you've become a Sufi. <laughs> Allah. I don't know if I'd call myself a Sufi, but this is the path, people, the path. Right, so there was a, a very needed discussion between Jordan Peterson and Mustafa Akyal on Islam, Christ, and liberty. So I watched this. Uh, I found it very interesting, I must say. I, I appreciated the fact that this discussion happened. I think there were many... Um, um, many topics I would love for them to have factored into it. But naturally, obviously, time is sensitive and there's only so much they can discuss given a certain time frame. Now, so what they do is they begin the conversation. There's, and those of you that haven't watched it, there's, it's, it's very amicable. There clearly seems to be a sense of dignified respect. And I think this, I've really, this is something I've really enjoyed that there was a mutual flow, a bi-directional flow um, of uh, mutual uh, dignified respect and a reciprocity of acknowledging each other's opinions. I really, uh, I thought, wow, I, I liked that because I felt, you know, I'm not watching a debate. I'm not watching two people taking digs at each other. I'm watching two intelligent people have a conversation like two people would over a cup of coffee and really get into that conversation. You know where the real talk happens in life. <laughs> Allah. So, and you're watching it and they're going and they, they hey, but what about this? And, you know, this is like this. And so I, I loved the, the dynamics were spot on. I think, uh, I don't know whether they knew each other before and that assisted in that, um, maybe, but but that definitely is an absolute plus point. So, you know, absolute 10 out of 10 marks for the dynamism between themselves. The topics I think um, that were discussed mainly, they seem to uh, reflect um, Christology, in the sense, how, how do Christology from a Muslim perspective, how do Muslims view Christ and how do they get around the divinity aspect? Now, to be fair, that topic, I, 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 it's not necessarily something that gets my engine going. It's not something which I think is such a, an, you know, like an amazing topic for me as a person. So I, I found the topic I'd probably give it something mm, just maybe like about six out of ten the topic but i can understand why jordan peterson was doing it uh because he was trying to um bring a perspective which is the muslim perspective to his audience but then i suppose his audience are not necessarily christian although many are believers or maybe he feels that most of his audience are Christians. That's why he did this. But I didn't think most of Jordan Peterson's audience are, um, you know, like fervent Christian, whether they have a Christian name or not. Uh, so I don't know. Fair enough. I, I get it. That's why he did it. And that discussion, it involved things like uh, they spoke about um, the, the, the character of Christ within the Christian and then Muslim tradition. And I must say, I think uh, there were some difficult questions that were presented to Mustafa Akyal on, um, you know, how do um, Muslims respond to things like Mustafa Akyal himself actually presented that Muslims, the Quran affirms the Quranic um, rhetoric. It affirms Jesus as the word of God. And then this, obviously, it would intrigue anyone. So Jordan Peterson asks him that, how, how do you reconcile that? Because how do you differentiate between the word of God and divinity? 
and I think that's a very it, it was a it's a difficult topic, but it's a it's a very intriguing discussion. I don't think Mustafa Akial gave that much time to it to that particular discussion, maybe because of its nature that it's so complex and it's incredibly uh, difficult to. It's quite amorphous in it by its nature. It doesn't really have a shape to it. And trying to force it into a shape could obviously be uncomfortable even for, for, for any academic. So, yeah, he, d he does answer. He gives some, he says, well, look, this has always been vague, even for Muslims. And I, I thought, fair enough, that that is true. Uh, he does highlight that um, that this... He gives one response, which I found very interesting. He says that some people interpret the word of God because Jesus embodied the, the revelation in the sense that he was the walking, talking revelation. Just as some person, like the Hadith says, that the Prophet وسلم, was the walking, talking Quran. That you know, kana al Quran, as the Hadith states, that in some ways that Jesus, he was the good news, because what are the gospels? The gospels are, you know, really just incidents of what Jesus was doing. He's going here and he meets someone and he says this and he says that. And I thought that's actually wow. You know, I really liked that the way he said that. Wa kalima al qaha. Ila Maryam, that this word that has been given to God. What was interesting, he doesn't he didn't mention this part, is that many Mufassirin, uh, including Ibn Ashur, the great Maliki legend, and my indirect teacher through Sheikh Sidi Khubza, I have an ijaza to his Quran and his teachings. But uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Ibn Ashur, the the grand the grand mufti of the Malikiya in the 20th century. His tafsir, which is 30 volumes, he writes that this is um, a this is a reflection of what is in the Gospel of John. He says that in the Gospel of John, it says in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, but the Word, you know, it, he says that this is, it's echoing that. Um, if I recall correct, because he highlights, not that, you see, now he doesn't go into it too much, but he's highlighting that what the Quran is showing, it's kind of welcoming Christians. And this is Ibn Ashur, and I believe actually even Fakhruddin al-Razi may highlight some of that as well. But the other simple explanation many Muslim Mufassirin give is that, oh, this was the command that as in B, because he didn't have a, a father, those who take that view, which is the majority. So they say that this was the command. But then, you see, it, it, it raises more questions because then they also believe the same thing about Adam, but they don't call Adam the word of God. So why not? And then in that case, why don't they call the world the word of God? Because the world came into existence. And so it has... It, you see, nobody really seems to answer this question with a lot of substance uh, historically as well. There's a lot of, um, it's quite amorphous, the whole thing. It's not structured. Um, yeah. I would also add to that. I mean, th they are saying it, but I would kind of also f funnel in there that, you see, this was to show that you can believe that Jesus is the word of God. You can believe that without embracing a divinity about him. And I think this was one of the reasons that the Quran was using this language towards the Christians, because it doesn't use this language for anyone else, not even for Adam. or So people saying, well, this is because he was created without a father or so on. They also believe that about Adam, but they don't say that. They, they don't refer to him as the word of God. Or, and the word of God is really a Christian theme, you know, this logos. And they see Jesus as this kind of embodiment. And what Mustafa, Dr. Mustafa uh, Akial does highlight is that it's how the Muslims also see the Qur'an as the word of God. 
so in some ways it's like saying jesus was the word of god but muslims don't worship the quran you see muslims don't we don't bow down to the quran and things like that in that sense i mean unless somebody's using it metaphorically as the command of god or the inspiration or the word of, but we don't worship the quran we worship god so in many ways what i would have also kind of um, um kind of footnote uh, added as a footnote to that conversation is that you see the quran was bringing to the, the the foresight of Christians that come to a common word between us, you know, ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa in baynana wa baynakum. That, you know, come. The Quran is not, Islam is not against you. Many Christians, it's, it's interesting that many, so, subject to many studies, many Christians have said that the only reason they are Christian is because of Christ. If Christ was not this figure, then they wouldn't see the appeal in Christianity. So keeping that sentiment in mind, the Quran is saying that, look, even if you want to call him the word of God, the Quran is calling him the word of God. But we don't worship him. We only worship God, you see? And I think even though it is left vague, but it's it's done like that with the purpose to extend that welcoming hand to these people who were the recipients of the Qur'an, who were kind of listening to the Qur'an, they could understand it, but they were Christians. And just to remind them that this is a continuation of the Abrahamic faith. So I think that discussion was really, I mean, it's a very complex discussion. Um, it was raised. Uh, I, Dr. Mustafa does answer it. He does give some of these points. It is difficult, so I don't know how much more he could have answered, but it could have had a bit more of a discussion to it. But I feel the problem is uh, people may think that you know oh my god we're treading in murky waters you know I, like they feel uncomfortable discussing it because they just don't you know they they just feel that i don't know because because <laughs> everybody in the past has also been a bit um you know they've not it not left a coherent statement they've said many different things but it's not really coherent every answer leaves more questions unanswered so yeah so there was that part um there was um he is um, dr uh Akyal, he does say that the quran uh, highlights the character of jesus the character of mary these personalities uh highlights them very specifically emphasizes them um which unquestionably is true and he also does highlight that maybe in many ways it's better to juxtapose islam to judaism than it is to christianity because there's many more similarities between islam and judaism than there are between islam and christianity although there are similarities between islam and christianity too and i thought that was a a very interesting and uh a very interesting point that definitely rings true on many um in, on many instances so i see what he's saying and he and he highlights that the prophet moses musa alayhi salam is the most prominent um, personality and character that is mentioned in the Quran, alayhi salam. And I think, uh, yeah, that's true. You know, the Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, is definitely the most recurring prophet in the Quran who is spoken of. So, yeah, that was fascinating. And just highlighting that there is not just a Judeo Christian tradition, but a, Jude uh, a Judeo Christo Islamic tradition. I thought that was really good. Then there was a lot of discussion uh, between the two about totalitarianism. Um, and that totalitarianism is really a problem. And it is independent of faith. So you could have, just as you have Chairman Mao, you've had Hitler, you've had Stalin, you've had these people in the 20th century. They are quite independent from religion, even if they did have a faith of some sort. But really, this is totalitarianism, you know, fledged out. So to highlight 
and attack religions based on that. So I thought that was a, 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 a you know a wonderful point that's being reminded once again. 